while working as Deputy Assistant Secretary, uh, as the Bush presidency transitioned into the Clinton administration, a new Assistant Secretary came, Winston Lord. He was the ambassador in China who I had dinner with and uh, because I knew who was on deck when Bobby Thompson hit home run. Uh, he uh, was very favorably disposed towards me. And we traveled to Vietnam together. And uh, we, as we traveled around the country, we were in Da Nang. And uh, we had a free evening and we got into a couple of Ciclo taxis and went riding out to uh, sort of a local bar, nightclubs, got some lights strung up, restaurant, get something to drink. And we order a couple of beers and I'm in speaking Vietnamese and ordering beer and the waiter said, do you want ice? So I said to Winston Lord, do you want ice? No, 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 no. And I said, I'll have ice because every beer I've ever drunk in Vietnam, it's always warm, it's never refrigerated. I always had ice, give me ice. So I drink uh, the beer with the ice. He drinks the beer without the ice. We go back to uh, Washington and I become sick. And I'm uh, so sick, I have to go to uh, specialists outside the State Department, tropical medicine specialists, and they can't figure out what's wrong with me. They're analyzing many of my bodily fluids, which have taken on strange colorations and nobody can figure out what it is. And they finally send off my blood and urine to the Center for Disease Control, who send back an analysis and say, Mr. Quinn is suffering from hepatitis E. E, who's heard of hepatitis E? No one. They said, there's only been a few cases ever. He's one of the maybe 10 people to have brought hepatitis E to the United States. I was feeling kind of proud, uh, but uh, sick. And uh, they said, the, uh, the good news is that it's not as damaging uh, or potentially fatal as some other kinds of hepatitis, but there's nothing to be done to counter it, and it just has to wear off, and in between, you will be debilitated. And so I would spend several months at home, because what happens with hepatitis uh, is that it occupies all of the blood cells so that oxygen can't be transmitted to your brain or to other parts of your body. You become extremely weak and it's very, very difficult to think. So I had had this whole agenda that I was working on and I'm at home laying in bed. I have a phone next to me sitting on the bed with a long cord and as people would call me to get the background on things I'm working on, I'd have to roll over, lay on my side and talk to them on the phone. And then when I'd hang up, I was so weak, I'd have to rest just to have enough energy to roll back. That's how weak I was. And this would go on. I, I remember I was sick during the OJ Simpson trial. I watched the whole trial. On, on TV, it was the only thing you could find on TV. Um, all the channels were covering it. Um, and then finally, when I was strong enough to get up and go back to the State Department, my job had been assigned to someone else because uh, I was uh, out for so long and I was given some project about drafting some language. I forget what it was about. And I would sit and try to write sentences. And I couldn't get 
beyond about three or four words in a sentence. It was so scary to see intellectual capacity so debilitated. It was one of those many stories of medical issues that affected me and plagued me throughout my foreign service career.